Hello friends, Rita Lawrence here in Freedom Mastery and we are going to cover chapter 7 review of the science of being well and I'm also going to cover some of the social aspects of well-being covered from the uh, the Institute of Wellness. So chapter 7 of the science of being well and I'm reading my notes. I actually have my laptop here, I mean my iPad and then I just keep my computer screen right behind my iPad so that I can see my notes. I use Workflowy for my notes. And I, I'm on chapter seven, I have so many notes. So I'm gonna work on really just pulling out the key points to this because your time is valuable and so is mine. Um, but I really wanna get this out. I really wanna get this across, what this has talked to me, what this has spoken to me, what this is actually doing in my own life uh, personally to help with my well wellbeing um, so that you can make sure that it's serving you as well and you can help others, you know, take, to take action in their own well-being and not you know we, I, I just find that in my own life and many many people that I speak to on a regular basis are just waiting you know for something outside of them to uh, come across to make them well again or you know for their miracle cure or for the miracle um, you know medicine to come out to to cure them and what I have found in, for my own personal journey and, and also in reading and reviewing this book is that we have access to health within us. We have choices and control of our health and well-being even when we feel and think that we do not. We always have control. There is always something that we have control over. And it's a beautiful piece of truth that we've got to find and claim in our lives every day, especially for those of you like me that, that go through physical stuff um, in their life, you've got to be able to access, you know, where your health is. you got to be able to grab hold of that and be strong and be well and be and feel healthy and feel, you know, that your life is is healthy and well. I mean, there is a difference between living in in disease and allowing it to overtake you and versus you know having disease or having issues but not allowing it to overtake you and I do believe that a lot of what this talks about is simply um, raising ourselves raising our awareness and our consciousness above the physical plane so that we can enjoy a level of health and well-being that most you know in the human world are not enjoying because they're focusing on the physical they're focusing on the disease they're focusing on the aspects number one that we have no control over and number two that are negative and bringing us down and not raising us up and, and creating a beautiful life an abundant life for us it's holding us back when we focus on the pain and the problems so this is a, a beautiful book in that aspect that it really really does bring in physical and metaphysical it goes well beyond you know everything that we can see and really gets into some some amazing information okay so let's get into it so um you know i did my live on wednesday in the public group on uh, intentional attention right being intentional where to where we're giving our attention it matters it absolutely matters because if we're not intentional with where we're putting our attention and this chapter talks a lot a lot about this um, then then we're allowing whatever comes to, to, to take our attention and to control us even to control our mind and it's vital for our well-being for us to choose for us to make that decision to have control of where our attention goes and what our well-being is um, you know, one of the first questions that popped into my mind too as I'm studying this, this is, can this relate to addiction and recovery? Can it? So all belief begins in the will to believe. You direct your will upon what's in your mind to produce a belief. You determine what you, should, what you will believe, what you are believing, what you should believe. What you believe is all a choice, and it is your choice. Um, what you think, choice. What you give your attention to, a choice. In all things, we have a choice, in other words. In all things, right? In all things. So anytime we get to that point where we're either frustrated or we're, whatever it is that we're feeling, a, a negative emotion or something that is not serving us, we have a choice in the matter. 
We have a choice in how we see it. We have a choice in how we respond to it. We have a choice in whether we focus on it, whether we give it our attention, you know, whatever it is. If it's not going to serve us, then don't give your attention to it. It says to turn the other way. This book talks about very much, very clear, turning your head from anything that's not serving your health and well-being. So two statements you must will to believe. And I'm, I, I wrote these, this is right out, right from the book. One, there is a thinking substance from which all things are made. And that man receives the principle of health, which is his life from this substance. Super powerful statement that you must believe. In other words, that our mind, just a second. In other words, that our mind um, is separate from our body and that it doesn't have to be working, you know, at the same level of our body. We can raise our mental awareness to be at another level than what we might be functioning at physically and what we might be held at in our physical body at the moment, right? As man's thoughts are, so will the functioning of his physical body be. So for a long enough time, you can hold that awareness and hold that mental strength and hold the truth of what you want in your well-being. Hold that so long that it begins to produce in your physical world. Um, it's just such a beautiful thing. Okay, and then number two, if man will think only thoughts of perfect health, he must and will cause the internal and involuntary functioning of his body to be the functioning of health. So these are the things that we don't, um, you know, right away, you know, physically have control over, but that are internal in our bodies functioning on a, you know, regular basis every day. Our, our cells are renewing, our blood is renewing, everything is renewing, everything is working on its own within us. And if we are to bring our mind and our awareness to that level of health, again, on a regular basis, consistency, there's not something you do from one day to the next and boom, you're, you're like, oh, I feel so well. This takes time and focus and intention to do this for a period of time until you begin to see the wellness coming or begin to perceive what your true well-being is. Because in my own personal experience, I've learned that, you know, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I didn't gain back my physical functions. You know, I, I still am super limited physically in my upper body, in my arms, and I, I'm just super limited still. But I found a well-being and I have found a strength from within, from my core, from my inner being that is beyond anything I could experience uh, negatively in the physical realm it, with, with my body. So, you know, you've got to find what that true picture of, of well-being and health is for you. And it takes time to get that down. It takes time connecting. Meditation is one thing that absolutely brings that to me. Um, so provided his external and voluntary functioning and attitude are in accordance with his thoughts. So in other words, eating, breathing, sleeping, um, living clean and green. In other words, living to the best of your health that you have, that you know possible. Chemical free. I highly recommend um, that, that you really make that a, a goal. And again, this is not something that happens quickly overnight. It took me a period of you know, months, um, you know, even years, and even, even till today, something you got to look at every day. You know, every time you go to the grocery store and look at your products, you got to look at the ingredients. Every time you look at something you're going to eat, um, you got to know what you're putting in your body. You know, the awareness of what you're putting in your body is, is huge. And these are basics that are up to us. We have control over these functions every day. We have control to see what we're putting in our body, what we're drinking, what we're eating. It's all a choice. It's all up to us. And we've got to start focusing on looking at that more. Because if we don't, it does affect us in, in ways that we might not want it to. Um, personal action. Here's where, you know, it start, talks a lot here about personal action, about performing the external functions in a certain way. Making sure that you're eating in the best way. And if you're reading ahead in this book, you're, I, I'm so excited because I am reading ahead and I see what's coming and it's, it's really exciting um, to see how much control we really do have. Uh, when so many of the world thinks that, you know, their health is out of control or their well-being is out of control or the world is out of control for all, you know, for that matter. It's really not. Um, so belief, obviously, first, and then to start acting um, on that belief we, because, guys, we can't 
fully believe in something and we can't grow our belief in something if we're constantly looking at something else, if we're constantly uh, questioning it or looking back at what used to be, or even looking at right now, how it is right now. You gotta know that things can change. You gotta know that it can, your perceptions can, can be different than what it is right now. So really, really making sure that, that you're really being open to the possibilities, so key. Um, anytime we're in doubt, anytime we're focusing on negativity, any, any of those things are not bringing us in alignment with well-being and health. Um, and it is only holding us back, truly. It, it absolutely is. Um, we cannot increase a belief for the amount of time necessary for it to become faith unless we act upon it. So, you know, this makes me think of uh, my strategies in school when I'm teaching my kids and how, you know, everything from their emotions, their senses, their um, actions, movement, anytime that they're learning something new, we include other parts of their, their senses so that they can hold that it longer and remember it better and, and, and basically grow that belief in whatever that topic is that we're teaching. Um, but that's kind of what this reminds me of, that as we're acting in health every day and as we're making sure that we're doing the things we need to do on a daily basis, getting rest, giving our meditation or, or quiet time to ourselves, um, keeping our day organized, being intentional with where we're putting our attention, um, not eating the stuff that makes you feel crappy, not eating things that when you eat them, you know that it's not serving you, you know, being proactive about your personal decisions is a huge piece of this. You've got to start doing that if you haven't already. Um, we cannot reap the, this is another one, we cannot reap the benefits in any way from a belief so long as you act as if the opposite were true. So you can say, I believe, you know, verbally, but unless you're acting it out and growing that belief, you're it, just saying it doesn't work. It absolutely doesn't work. You've got to be putting it into action. Um, you know, this, and I wrote a little note here. It reminds me of, you know, Christianity and how many, many will say, yes, I received the blood of Jesus. Yes, I am forgiven. But yet they continue to beat themselves up over mistakes and over life and over being human when that price has already been paid, right? It's like we forget. So same situation here. We've got the facts. The fact is we have health within us. It was born within us. We are capable and able to claim it now is our choice. Um, we literally must stop acting like sick people. D despite what situation you're in right now, you've got to begin acting like a healthy person, like a strong person. Um, one step toward acting externally like a well person, this is awesome, is to begin actually acting internally. So the first thing is not to start taking steps like doing a diet system or, um, you know, if you have physical conditions, going to a doctor, you know, I mean, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor, but I'm saying that if you begin working internally first on things, chances are you will begin seeing things change physically for you just by starting internally. So here are five internal actions to begin to act like a well person. And again, this for me is that thinking in a certain way formula. So one, form your conception of perfect health. Decide what perfect health means to you, in other words. Two, think about perfect health until it has definite meaning to you, which means bring it up in your mind over and over again. What is perfect health? In your meditations, in your prayer, in your reading, in your studying, what is perfect health? Keep your mind on it. Three, picture yourself as doing what strong and healthy people do. So for me and, you know, my situation, I was picturing myself um, walking outside and doing things. I was picturing myself playing with my kids on the trampoline. I was picturing myself um, taking care of my kids and, and bathing them and washing their hair. And I mean, even doing that to my own, for my own self at, for a while, I had to picture myself doing those things. And as time went on, sure enough, I did begin to gain the strength and the, 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 just that belief that I could do it. As I started visioning it more and more, I began to start doing it more and more. Um, four, have faith that you can and will do these things in a certain way. So have the faith that it is possible to do things in a certain way. We already know it is. Five, continue onward until you have a vivid conception of health. And it's personal for everyone. 
Um, you know, I thought too in my journey that health was going to be something way different than what it is for me now. Um, but I was open to seeing health in a different way than what I had perceived and uh, thought that it was. So being open to new um, perceptions. Connect with the supreme six. So actually it's six internal actions. Six is the most important. I do believe connect with supreme. Give thanks to God for the perfect health that he gives you. So whatever it is you have in your well-being right now, be thankful for every single thing that you have right now. You've got to begin being grateful for it. That is, and this chapter calls it a sheet anchor for when everything else is going awry. Literally when all else fails. Be grateful because being grateful and connecting with God um, definitely will bring and open the doors to more. So the greatest essential thing it says here is the key. And this is amazing. Like This is so big to me. The key to all mental healing, guys, the key to all mental healing, the whole thing, it says, here it is. Okay. Sever all relations with disease. Enter into full mental relationship with health. Now, what is a relationship? A relationship is something you nurture, you feed, you give to it, you, you spend time there. It's not something you're going to do today and watch this video and be done. You've got to keep your mental attention on it. Um, and it talks about, it, it said, you know, and again, you know, religion is, I, I'm not here to, to preach a religion, I'm not here to convert anybody, but it talks about Christian science and it talks about how um, it induces the sick to ignore disease as an unreal thing and to only accept health. I totally resonate with that. It also talks about the failures, right? The failure of Christian science is that the practitioners, while thinking in a certain way, do not eat, do not drink, do not breathe or sleep in that same way. So here again, you can't just speak it. You've got to do it. You've got to think it. You've got to live it. Uh, formulate your central thoughts so well that you can repeat them readily. So in other words, memorize and put them, you know, write it on your heart, what your well-being is that you want to achieve. It is possible. I know it is for you. Use affirmations to raise your belief, especially in adverse environments when you're around people, when you're in situations that you, you know, might not be able to get out of right away. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's, um, you know, friends that you might be around at times, um, close your eyes and know those affirmations that you write on your heart. So in order to write them on your heart, you've got to read them and see them every day, every single day. Now in Freedom Mastery or in Journey to Freedom, there are affirmations posted. I've been posting almost every day affirmations. Use those if you need some. And there's also a, an I am statements in the morning ritual in the file section. You can use those too. But you want to close your eyes and ears to everything else and write those on your heart so that when you're in situations where you need that, that reassurance, that affirmation, you've got them written on your heart and you can readily repeat them. Exercise your willpower in choosing only thoughts of health. Again, it's a choice. Arrange your environment so that it suggests thoughts of health. Um, Mm, this is so important. Fill with health, power, joy, vitality, youth. You know, don't be looking at pictures of death, of old age, of dead people and animals even. Like anything that is not life, that is not well-being. Remove it and do not look at it. I don't post anything on my wall, anything in my group, nothing about death. I mean, you know, I have some stuff about I do have one post about uh, being thankful and grateful when you, you and being courageous when you lose a loved one, but I'm talking, you know, the, the, the downside of it, you know, where you feel that emptiness, that, that emotional negativity of those kinds of things. Don't be a part of spreading that. And, you know, it could be good. You know, it might be something that, you know, you're trying to raise money maybe for, I don't know, some kind of orphanage and, you know, there's all these I don't post pictures of the starving kids. Like, I, you know, post pictures of happy kids and say you want to help feed them. But constantly looking at the poverty and looking at the death and looking at the, that doesn't help at all. Focus on the, the what you want to give and what you want to bring 
to the table, life, abundance, joy, vitality, well-being. That's what you want to be sharing. That's the only thing you want to be sharing. Uh, let's see. When you're confronted with your habit or your weakness or your disease, whatever you want to call it, um, you want to make sure that you are then immediately turning away from that and focusing on what's good and what's healthy and what's, what's well. Uh, we cannot try to use our will against ourselves or others. Um, you know, we can't will someone else to be healthy. We can't even will ourselves to be healthy, but we can use our will to focus on health and to put our mindset there. And that's the biggest part of that. Um, so important, so vital. So here now we're going to talk a little bit just about the social dimension of well-being. Um, and this is so, this lights me up so much because this is exactly what Robert and Melody are helping us to do, are helping me and, and anybody else that's, that's in our coaches group, that's in our six-figure mastery, that's in Robert's mentoring group. Um, this is exactly what their platform and their basis is when it comes to social well-being. Um, I'm going to read a little bit off right here from my notes. So as you travel a wellness path, this is actually from the, the Institute of Wellness, and it's in the files section. There are resources in the files section uh, for you to look at. This is called the, the Six Dimensions of Wellness Model. So you can take a look at that if you want to read more. But here, this is what it talks about. It is better to contribute to the common welfare of our community than to think only of ourselves. Now, it's so not human nature to only think of ourselves, but it is so much better for humanity. And again, here, common welfare of everybody to think of others and to lift and give and serve the world in whatever way you can. And these days with the internet and social media, it's so easy to do that. It is, you don't even have to leave your house. You don't have to go anywhere. It is better to live in harmony with others and our environment than to live in conflict with them. Now, harmony, what does harmony mean? Harmony doesn't mean everybody has to be the same. Harmony means that we accept our differences and we accept wherever each of us is at and still continue to love, grow, and support each other in that. That's, to me, what harmony means. So everybody's not going to be the same. Everybody's not going to be doing the same thing. There's random people in different network marketing companies. There are different kinds of coaches in our group. There are, you know, so much uh, uniqueness and variety. But with this, you know, the social dimension, what it encourages is to contribute, to contribute. It's one of the, you know, basic human needs. And it's honestly one of my top on my list. So, you know, Journey to Freedom is my giving group. And that's where my contribution is, you know, that piece of my well-being puzzle is put into place every single day. When I post, when I welcome someone and give them a gift, anytime you want to give, if you don't already have a gift giving group, one, we can start working on you building one. And I'm here to help you with that. Reach out to me and let me know if you're ready to do that. And if you have not, you can give the things in my group. You can give the things in Melody's group, Melody Here to Serve. You can add people to give them the gifts in the file section and do it, do it that way. Get, you know, do your contributing that way. If you don't have another, you know, system set up for giving that is simple, easy, and it doesn't mean you have to buy stuff and, you know, spend money. You don't have to give, you know, tangible things away. The best thing to give is wisdom. The best thing to give is knowledge. And as you're here listening to this and you're reading and you know looking at the other posts in the group, you're learning and you're gaining. So turn around now and make it a goal and a, you know I want to inspire you to turn around and give that back somewhere. You know, make a post, tell somebody, teach somebody what you're learning and, and what you're gaining from this and, and help the world around you. That's what we're here for, and that's what I'm here for for you, and I'm just blessed and thankful. I want to thank my mentors, Robert Hollis and Melody Riba. They're amazing. They, they, they are the reason I'm here now doing this, um, and, and, and the reason for all my success. The, the system that they've been able to teach to put into place is 
beyond anything else that I've ever seen. So I'm so grateful to be here giving this all back to you in Freedom Mastery. Um, and I love you all so much. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon next week, Friday at 2.30. We will, I will be back and I will be covering chapter uh, eight of the science of being well. And we'll look at another one of the dimensions of wellness uh, in a little more detail as well. And I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk again soon. Bye.